Hello, everybody. Um, today, I'm going to show all of you um, my process for uh, taking an artist's style as reference and inspiration and trying my best to um, create from also taking inspiration from a still from a film and kind of blending those ideas together. Um, so I'm going to imagine today, uh, I'm going to try to think to myself and get in the mindset of artist Richard Diemencorn as if he were to try to paint a scene or this specific scene here from the film Pulp Fiction, um, which I've done a master study of uh, earlier in the playlist and uh, a master study of Diemencorn's work as well. I'm going to try to take what I've learned through this process so far and kind of meld those ideas together and then later on we'll talk about text too. So. Um, for part one here, um, what I want to first talk about is how you make decisions based off of, you know, what you've discovered about your artist's work, um, the style specifically. So for me, the things that I noticed that were really unique about Demon Corn was uh, a lot of overpainting. There was a lot of texture. And by overpainting, what I mean, everybody, is that it seemed to me through studying his work, um, not just the last few weeks, um, but other times that I've looked at his work, that there would be a large amount of color put down first on that canvas and then things would be built over top as time went on uh, as he was making. And a lot of visible brush marks and things as well. Um, and some things were abstracted quite a bit from, let's say, uh, you know, life very much so. So, um, Things that were unique about some of the framing in some of these Tarantino uh, films, and specifically Pulp Fiction, um, is that the there's a really good sense of lighting to create the setting and the mood. Uh, in specifically this film, eating food and these conversations at diners uh, and things were really, really important to help establish the rapport of the characters and things, so the setting in, uh, was really important. And I also, too, folks, while you're working in this way, I like to have other other works out as reference as well. So I do have a, a different painting here by Richard Diemencorn of a figure here seated next to a, looks like a window or maybe outside on some sort of patio. But um, other things I'm noticing about this specific work is with the figure, the face, the hands, things are very much abstracted. So they're not not highly, highly representational by any means. Um, they're even more pared down than my master study that I did. So um, there is just large values being used, large areas of color for the face, the eyelid, uh, sort of the crease of the mouth and things as well. So we're going to keep all this stuff in mind when we start to create uh, this work. So again, I'm going to quickly sort of go over my process, what I would do. And all of you, if you're working with different artists and different film stills, you're going to have a different take uh, because maybe your artist uses a different material, right? Deep and corn in these works using paint, oil on canvas. Uh, I'm going to try to use what I have here digitally to kind of emulate that. But you might have an artist that is using collage or pencil and things too. So um, to get us going, the first things I'm going to do, very similar to what I talked about in the other videos, um, is I'm going to just place down really quick the overall basic structure of where things are in this space here. Um, so I'm going to create this really, really quickly. I'm not even going to use a grid for this. I know that I talked about that with the other masterworks, but for this specific version, I'm going to continue to look at my reference images and go back and forth um, and try to be as accurate as I can. What is great about my artist Something that was unique is that they overpainted things. So if Demon Cord would make a mistake, whatever that would mean to him, he would overpaint, I'm sure, uh, over top of some of these things. So I'm not even going to worry too much about erasing things at this point because it just doesn't seem that my artist was too concerned with that. Um, so I'm going to just quickly, for our first layer here, I'm just going to place down the, the general shapes of the space of what I'm going to try to make here uh, without being too concerned um, for the accuracy like I was with my other master copies and things. So I'm just placing some gestural marks here. Um, you know, and I'm just looking at sort of the, the space that I had here in the image. So I'm just kind of placing some stuff here. Um, I'm going to place this table in here and uh, just kind of place roughly 
where that would go, and uh, the booth would be in the background, and then I know that the figure will probably be, and I'm going to do a really rough kind of figure here, um, the figure's going to be in here. So hopefully you're carrying forward the knowledge that you've you've had with creating your master copies um, as far as your placement and things of where, th you know, your characters and your figures might be. So that's just my first layer. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the next move of what I'm going to start to do, and I'm actually going to start to paint over top of this layer here. Um, so please go to the next video, and I will see you there.